Hello Live Oak and welcome back to day two of our devotional series about suffering. And we are looking specifically at the question of why do bad things happen to good people? And yesterday we did the first part of this uh, study and talking about good people. And I said that there really are no good people, that uh, we are all born into sin as sinful humans. And as a result, we have no right to expect from a holy God anything but judgment. In fact, if we demand that God be just, all that he could give to us would be death and hell. Today, I want us to look at this idea of bad things or pain and suffering. There's three aspects of pain and suffering that I think would be helpful as we talk about this. Uh, number one, life is going to bring pain and suffering to every single one of us. None of us will be exempt from it. It's the nature of life. Um, this pain and suffering is real, and I don't want to minimize it in the way that I speak about it today. Many of you have suffered tragedy. Many of you have suffered loss that has brought about great pain, and that is a very real part of our experience as humans. The second thing I want to say is that most of our pain and suffering comes because of sin, whether it be sin of others or our own sin. We need to understand that this world is cursed by sin and is under the curse of sin. Therefore, much suffering and pain will take place because of that reality. Thirdly, I want us to understand that while in this life, you and I will see a very small picture of what God is doing in all of this, we may not see the reasons behind everything that happens. And in fact, I would say that we will never see the reason behind everything that happens. However, it is our faith that leads us to understand and to trust what God is doing. So I want to give us three biblical points that will help us process pain and suffering. Number one, it's important to remember that God is good. I love the interaction between Moses and God that we read about in Exodus 33, 19. Moses has asked God, begged God to show him his glory. And the Lord responds to Moses and he says, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you my name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. It's interesting that Moses asked for the glory of God, and God said, I will pass, allow my goodness to pass before you. And as a result of that, the Lord declares that it is his to show mercy and grace to whomever he pleases. The second thing I want us to understand is that God is sovereign over all. There's no molecule of this universe that operates apart from the, the power and the rule of God. That's important because as followers of Christ, we can trust that suffering has purpose. And that brings us to the third point, that for believers, Romans 8, 28 teaches us and promises to us that God will cause all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That is what we cling to, that everything that comes our way, no matter how difficult or how painful, no matter how much it doesn't make sense, it is all working for our good, though we may never understand in this life how that all comes together. We trust that God is doing it. So because of this, we know Number one, that not a single second of our suffering escapes God's attention, not an ounce of it. We do not suffer. We do not experience pain that God is unaware of. Secondly, every ounce of pain and tribulation is accomplishing something in us. And that is our trust that God is working about for the good of those who love him. Thirdly, our good God is actively working in a million different ways, in a million different lives, to bring about the good of his people, and we can trust that, and we can rely on that when it doesn't make sense to us. And number four, I want to challenge you to join me in the process of redefining suffering. I have begun to not look at pain and suffering as as woe is me and I must be doing something wrong, I've begun to look at it in a, in a way that says, God, I am anticipating and excited about what you are gonna do through this in my life to make me more like you.